What's up guys, Justin with the Podcast Dojo. Today, we're going to be talking about a defunct restaurant chain, Chi Chi's Restaurants. Just like with a few other closed restaurants I've talked about here, some of the products are still available, but no standing restaurants. Well, at least not in the United States and Canada anyway. So without wasting any more time, let's talk about Chi Chi's Mexican Restaurants. Chi Chi's Ultimate Combo shows how even we get carried away. It's eight great Chi Chi's favorites. Cheese nachos, a burro, enchilada, chili con queso, taco, beans, rice, plus Mexican fried ice cream. All at a price even we don't believe. Chi Chi's Ultimate Combo. Better hurry in before we have second thoughts. Chi Chi's, a celebration of food. In 1975, over in Richfield, Minnesota, a restaurant owner named Marno McDermott wanted to open a restaurant called Chi Chi's, named after his wife's nickname. How, however, this wasn't Marno's first experience with a Mexican restaurant. He had opened a Mexican fast food chain called Zapata Foods, which would later be known as Antigo. Believing there was full demand for full-service Mexican restaurants, Marno sought the help of former Green Bay Packer Max McGee, who owned Left Guard Restaurant and Bar. The restaurant was an instant success. The first year of sales were $400,000 and eventually became $2 million. The success caught the eye of a stockbroker by the name of John Stevens. Stevens convinced McDermott to sell him the rights to operate and franchise Chi Chi's restaurants. Former KFC Vice President Shelley Frank was then brought on to run the new restaurants. In 1977, Frank became the president and CEO of the company. Headquarters would then move to Louisville, Kentucky, Frank's hometown. The early 80s proved to be a rapid success. Stores were averaging about 70,000 to 80,000 a week. They also went from 1 to 46 restaurants. Profits from the company as a whole even reached 9.1 million a year. In 1985, 42 new restaurants opened, 27 company-owned, and 15 franchised. By 1986, Chi Chi's operated 200 restaurants with a net income of $16.7 million. The first set of problems would begin in the late 80s due to a combination of an oversaturated restaurant industry, lowered alcohol consumption, the rapid expansion of their own restaurants, and an increase at at-home entertainment. The average restaurant was about 10,000 to 12,000 square feet, and they became too big to operate profitably. Another added factor was poor communication. Since there was never a strong communication network, managers could never let corporate know what their stores needed, creating low employee morale and spirit. Spirit dropped even further after Chi Chi's filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Management turnover rate reached as high as 80%, creating inconsistency in food and service. In 1986, Hal Smith, the former president and CEO of Chili's, would take over when Shelley Frank retired. Smith recognized a lot of the major problems with Chi Chi's and focused on corporate communication systems, such as face-to-face -face meetings, and even reduced corporate staff by 18% and refined certain jobs. Not only did Smith refine jobs, but he also had management conferences and was much more accessible to talk to than his predecessor and paperwork was cut so that managers could focus on customers. The average Chi Chi's manager was working around 80 hours a week with six work days, and that was now cut to around 50 hours a week with two days off. Smith also added stock options, benefits, and bonus plans. Stores were doing much better, but 21 stores were closed by April of 1988, taking a $20 million write-off, and there would be around only eight to 10 new restaurants a year instead of 20 or 30 a year. In the winter of 1988, Chi Chi's would open the three new conceptual restaurants, which were Papanadas Border Cafe, Chejitas Mexican Cafe, and GW Sharkies. Also in 1988, all of the refurbishment attracted an unwanted takeover bid from the Carlisle Group, who had recently become one of Chi Chi's largest stockholders. However, Food Maker Incorporated, the owner of Jack in the Box Restaurant, and the fifth largest fast food chain would purchase the company. Hal Smith would continue to work as a division of food maker. However, the economy would begin to take a toll in the early 90s. Taco Bell started adding cheap eats and even McDonald's offered a breakfast burrito. 
Other restaurants such as Olive Garden, Cookers, and Macaroni Grill were luring customers away with the appeal of fresh food. Chi Chi started adding value entrees at $3.99 and $4.99 with freshly prepared ingredients. To show customers that there was indeed from scratch cooking, Smith added tortilla making machines to the lobby of company owned stores. In 1992, Smith left Chi Chi stating personal reasons. I'm sure this is a result of his vice president leaving the company a year earlier. The executive vice president of Jack in the Box would replace Smith. In June of 1992, Chi Chi's and Food Maker took over Console Restaurant Corporation, operating in Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Though there were attempts to overturn the takeover, Chi Chi's was able to purchase Console's assets for $8.7 million, also taking over their debt. In early 1994, Chi Chi's was acquired by Family Restaurants Incorporated. Family Restaurants owned Chi Chi's top competitor, El Torito and now both companies were together under one company. This now meant that there was now coast-to-coast -coast full service Mexican restaurants. However, Chi Chi's was still weighed down by competition. By 1996, sales had dropped by around $278 million. To stay ahead of the curve, all restaurants were updated with a new look such as high ceilings, water fountains, and plants. They also attempted a takeout service where you could order your food online and pick it up at the restaurant. New marketing tactics were implemented such as the slogan, Life Always Needs a Little Salsa, and the Bug Tour which were traveling Volkswagen Beals that were adorned with Chi Chi's advertising. Suspects that someone, probably an employee, spread the hepatitis virus by not washing their hands after going to the bathroom. Consumer editor Yvonne Zanos is here now with more on how a company deals with a crisis like this. Yvonne. Well, Jen, certainly this is the last kind of publicity a restaurant wants, especially one that is already financially troubled. Chi Chi's recently filed for reorganization under Chapter 11 bankruptcy, but the experts say when a public health issue and a restaurant's reputation come together like this, prompt action is vital. The sign on Chi Chi's in Beaver County is clear. The restaurant is closed. Chi Chi says it plans to reopen within the next 72 hours with the approval of health officials. If you ate at this Chi Chi's any time within the last 14 days, the health message is, see your doctor. And to all consumers, Chi Chi's spokesperson, infectious disease specialist and food safety expert, Dr. Cynthia Wollenschlager says, we're taking appropriate action in conjunction with public health officials to ensure the safety of employees and patrons alike. It's really all about crisis management. Audrey Gusky, professor of marketing at Duquesne University, says although this shouldn't be a major crisis for the restaurant, a lot depends on what the company does now. Overall, depending upon how the company manages their crisis at this particular time, it's going to affect whether consumers are coming back and how soon they come back. It's up to the manager, it, whoever's watching those uh, employees, to uh, kind of make sure that they do the things that they need to do, like wash their hands. It's one person that did it could be others that did it. I mean, you're taking a chance every time you go to a restaurant anyways. It doesn't matter whether it's a good one or a bad one. It's really too early to tell how Chi Chi's business will be affected, if at all. But the Chi Chi spokesperson I talked to says she tested all 62 employees for hepatitis A and expects the results will now within the hour. This incident, by the way, underlines the importance of a new food code going into effect soon that bars bare hands, washed or not washed, from touching ready-to-eat food. Live in the newsroom, I'm Yvonne Zanos, KDKA TV News. Now this is where things get interesting and what I believe was the final blow to Chi Chi's restaurants. In November of 2003, just one month after filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, the largest hepatitis A outbreak in the history of the U.S. happened. It resulted in at least four deaths and 660 other illnesses in the Pittsburgh area. The source was traced back to green onions served at Chi Chi's in Beaver Valley Mall. Chi Chi settled all the lawsuits by 2004. In August of 2004, Outback Steakhouse bid $42.5 million for the rights to buy the remaining 76 properties, but did not buy the Chi Chi's name, operations, or recipes. On the weekend of September 18, 2004, Chi Chi's would close all the remaining properties. So what happened to Chi Chi's afterwards? Well, Hormo Foods purchased the right to use Chi Chi's brand items such as salsa. I've even found Chi Chi's brand Pina Colada at the liquor store. 
A Swiss company purchased the rights to the restaurants and has franchised stores in Europe, the Middle East, Asia, and North Africa. Now, do I think anything could have saved Chi Chi's? Not really. From what I read in my research, it seemed like there was too much shift in management and too much competition. While some companies I've covered here closed due to not changing with the times, I feel Chi Chi's couldn't change with the times fast enough. Do I think the hepatitis outbreak would have broken them at any time in their life? Yes, I do. I don't think they were ever a strong enough company to bounce back from something like that, especially an outbreak as severe as the one in 2003. So guys, that was Chi Chi's restaurants. Did you ever eat at one of their locations? I remember eating at one in the early 90s. I don't remember much about it, just that I had eaten at one. And of course, I remember commercials for it all the time. Please share your memories down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something, and I'll catch you guys next time.